Hey guys, it's Matt with Meat Church and welcome back to my outdoor kitchen. Today, we're gonna be making barbecue meatloaf. This video has been a long time coming because this is the very first recipe I ever wrote for meatchurch.com back in 2014. And I always say, this ain't your mama's meatloaf for sure. So we all grew up on meatloaf. It's ketchup based. This is going to have barbecue sauce in it, which is the big differentiator. Plus, I don't cook anything inside, so we're cooking it on the smoker. I'm gonna talk to you about a lot of options as we go through it, but this is really good, really hearty, really easy, and my family loves it, so I think you need to give it a shot. All right, so let's jump into what we're doing. We're gonna start out with three pounds of ground chuck, so 80, 20 meat, that's important. 80% meat, 20% fat. Um, that way the meat can kind of stick together. Uh, it's the same thing I use in burgers. Then we are going to use one pound of breakfast sausage. This is a tube of Whataburger breakfast sausage, just pork sausage. It's a good mix. Let me throw my gloves on here. And let's talk about all of our ingredients. Um, so I have one diced onion. It was probably large. My recipe calls for medium, but we like a lot of onions. So I've diced up one, one onion on the bigger side. Uh, right here, here's a little, little complicated step for you. Instead of using breadcrumbs, I'm going old school to something my mom did. This is four slices of white bread. It's a great use of old bread if something's getting stale. So I just cubed them up and then I put white milk on it since again, we're not using breadcrumbs. Uh, this is it's between a quarter and a half cup. It's not that important, but this is gonna also help bind things together. So I'm gonna mix that up and let it soak. While we mix some other stuff up here. My recipe says let it sit 10 minutes, but when you mix it up like that, you really don't have to let it sit that long. Um, heck, let's just throw it on in here. Okay. Two eggs. We're gonna mix all this up um, and I'm gonna add some seasoning and some sauce. Let me do that first to keep the, keep the gloves clean. So the big difference, like I said, instead of ketchup, we're using barbecue sauce. And I got a measuring cup here somewhere. It's over here hidden. So you need a half a cup of barbecue sauce. Um, you, you guys know I love meat minch womp sauce, so that's what I'm doing but I'm gonna kick it up a little further with something I have not done yet. I'm gonna go half and half womp sauce. I also love my friend Bear Holman's W sauce. This is an amazing Worcestershire sauce, um, but he just came out with this new version. Actually, it comes out next week at the time of filming. Nobody has this but me, I'm proud to say. This is a hot Worcestershire sauce called Fireshire. By the time this video comes out, it will no doubt be out and I'm sure you will all be enjoying it. So again, half a cup of liquid, you can just do half a cup of your favorite barbecue sauce. So this is a quarter cup because I'm doing a quarter cup of the fire shire. There we go. Okay, let's get some, uh, some seasoning in here. I go about two tablespoons. I also don't measure a whole lot. I'm gonna put my garlic and herb season with what you want. You could use salt and pepper. Get one more glove. And now let's just mix it all up. You want to mix this very thoroughly. And this is actually going to make enough for two meatloafs. But let me just get to mixing this up. Okay, that's mixed up super duper good. Let's talk about the next step. So when I first wrote this recipe, um, I actually cooked this in a pan, just in the pan in a pellet grill. And you can do that, but talking to my buddy Jonathan Fox, owner of Fox Brothers um, in Atlanta, the kings of Georgia barbecue, um, you know, we were talking about different ways that they do smoked meatloaf. He recently posted, by the way, cling wrap, my least favorite thing in any kitchen. Uh, Jonathan posted a picture on Instagram recently of a meatloaf with just an amazing bark. And I was like, dude, 
how did you do that? And I'm not going to give away all the secrets, but it got me to thinking, how could I get this out of this pan where I could get bark on the entire thing? And so what I'm going to do is put this loaf down into this loaf pan, and I'm going to put it in the freezer for about four hours just to make sure it's nice and firm and holds shape. Now this is a, a, a nine by 13 pan, so it depends on the size of your pan. And this, you know, you could do it in any pan that you want, but this is a tried and true method. And uh, like I said, this mixture of four pounds of meat actually will make two meat loaves in this size pan. And if you're making two, I'd put them together at the same time so that you can evenly distribute the amount of meat and keep them both the same size, but that's not like that important. So I'm gonna pack this in and then I'm gonna wrap it up I want it nice and filled out. Fill in all those corners. That looks good. Then we're just gonna cover it up and when this comes out of the freezer, this cling wrap comes right off here, which I'll show you all when this one comes out. There we go. I'm headed to the freezer. I will see you all in four hours. All right, guys, this has been in the freezer for four hours, and this is how easy it is. Slides right out. And you could just peel this right away. Um, I think you could, you know, you could go longer if like overnight is easier, uh, but you only need about four hours. And by the way, when we were putting this together, you know, there's a mix of like how wet do you want to make it so you don't dry it out in the smoker, but I don't want to make it too wet because I don't want the loaf to fall apart when I'm smoking it. All right, so now I'm going to put a binder on it because I'm going to season this. I'm just going to put more of the Worcestershire sauce on it. I always say binders are optional and you can use whatever you want if you use one. I'm making it barbecue meatloaf, so we're going to season it. I'm just using my all purpose holy gospel. Use anything you like. There we go. Beautiful. I'm not wasting any time, I'm going straight in the pit. There are multiple ways to cook this. When I first wrote the recipe, like I mentioned, I cooked it in a pan and I cooked it hotter on a pellet grill. Um, so think about this, do you want it smoky? Do you want it to be barbecue which that's my goal today. I want a smoked meatloaf. I love smoked in part into so many of my dishes, so I want to taste that smoke, which is why we created this loaf. Now, while we're going to drop down and go 250 degrees with post oak on the mill scale offset, from experience, this is going to take about four hours to get to 165 degrees internal temperature. So that's what we're shooting for today. So in the pit we go. I'm not going to do a thing to it. We'll see y'all in four hours when we are to temp. All right, guys, the meatloaf has been smoking right at four hours, and obviously that depends on the size of your meatloaf. But look at that, man. It's got amazing bark out here. I did not do a thing. Haven't spritzed it, nothing. Uh, the temperature was, you know, thereabouts 250. Sometimes it was a little higher. A couple times it was around 225, and that's just fine. I'm heating up some barbecue sauce in there because we're going to glaze this. But I think we did really well. It held shape. It looks great. I mean, I feel like this is gonna be a winner, but we gotta let it cool off. Um, we cooked it to 160. It's gonna carry over to closer to 165. So let's give this probably 15 minutes to cool off and we're going to glaze it and then try it. Normally I have a cocktail, but this is what pairs with meatloaf the way I grew up. All right, let me get my sauce. because we wanted to make this barbecue meatloaf even more barbecuey.
Oh yeah. Look at that. Whew. I have a feeling it's not gonna suck. I did make it difficult to slice now. Ooh, looks like a little molten lava cake. Okay. Oh yeah. And a nice little smoke ring there. Might be a little difficult for you guys to see with the sauce, but um, let me stack some pieces up here for you guys. But you can see it's got that good smoke penetration on the mill scale. I'm gonna eat that one. As expected, you guys could have cooked this on anything you want. Smoker, pellet grill, whatever you got. That sauce is so good. I'm gonna get in here. Dude, that's good. Sorry, Mom. That's better than yours. I'm just going to say that. Um, interesting new twist with the fire shire. It's not hot. You just know it's there. It just gives like a depth of flavor that I didn't really expect. I didn't put a lot in there. But that's really, really, really pretty good. Man, that's super good. But I love womp sauce. That's always icing on the cake for me. Sprinkles on a cupcake, whatever you want to call it. But garlic and herb worked really good in there. By the way, this is a cheap meal. This was 15 bucks um, to make this, and it made two of them, so $7.50 besides the sauces. Super cheap, goes a long way. This is more than enough to feed my family of four. Um, and you can make them, you can wrap them up, you can freeze them, you can keep them for a long time, you can cook them and you know hang on to them, reheat them during the week. This is a great meal option. So if you like what we're doing, please like and subscribe to our channel. Don't miss out on the Hardcore Barbecue Series. This is part of season two where we've got loads of delicious barbecue videos in that playlist. As always, this recipe is down in the description as well as on MeatChurch.com. Cheers. See you all next time.